All right, so in this one, we're gonna create our user login serializer that is going to allow us to eventually send back a authentication token. Initially, it's not gonna send back any token, we'll just set a, a, a blank one or a whatever one, um, and then later we'll actually use that token. But basically what's gonna happen here is we're gonna take a username or email as a field, and then a password as another field, and then finally have a token that will allow us to um, actually authenticate with that token later or to do requests with that token later, which is something we'll still discuss in the future. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna copy the basic stuff of the user create serializer all the way from to validate. Let's go ahead and copy that and right underneath it, we're gonna paste this and do user login serializer. First and foremost, we don't need two email addresses anymore um, at all. In fact, what we really need is just a single email address. Do note that keyword args of password is now going to be the single thing that we have there. So our username is going to be, it's gonna be just username. So username equals to that, or excuse me, that's email first, email. And then we'll use username equals to, we want a char field here. I'll explain why we're doing this in just a second. So since we're doing char field, let's go ahead and import that or car field is another way to, some people call it. Um, all right, so username, email, and we have that password. So that's a required field. We just over uh, we just overwrite the username and email fields to the way we want to see it. And what I'm gonna do here is actually change them slightly. So that's something we'll do in a second. Uh, but I also wanna have a token field. So we'll do token equals to char field. And this is gonna be allow blank equals to true, and then read only, read only, also true. And since we declared that, we wanna put this into our field as well. Okay, so we've got that part done. So let's actually just wrap this into a view. So we're gonna jump into our view itself. So there's a few things that I'm gonna to wanna to import here and I'm gonna just go ahead and copy and paste these in. Um, and I'll explain what these things are for later. But we see here we've got response, status, and API view. Um, so now what we wanna do is create our user login API view. So class user login API view, and this is just an API view. So that means we have to define all the methods that may, we may want here. Now, of course, you can still use permission um, classes as we've seen before. So in this case, I'm gonna do allow any because to see this or send a post, we're just gonna use allow any because we wanna be able to allow any sort of um, site or authenticated user or unauthenticated user to actually log in. And we're gonna say the serializer class is gonna be that user login serializer. So let's go ahead and import that user login API, oops, user login serializer. Let's make sure that's the name of it, and it is. All right, so that's our serializer class for a login. And now since we're using the base API view, we have to actually define the methods that we wanna use. So if we wanted to use put, we would do define put. If we wanted to use get, we would do define get and so on. Um, but I'm gonna do define post, so the post method is what we're using, and we'll just do self request, and then args, and keyword args, right? So this is just defining that post method. This is very similar to any sort of class-based view, um, but this is defining it for the API view. The post method and the create API view, they're very similar, but they're not quite the same in the sense that um, we are not gonna be saving anything here. Instead, we're just gonna be using that user login serializer to get the sort of data from that serializer. Anyways, let's go ahead and try that out. First of all, we'll say the data is equal to request.data. That is, of course, the posted data that's coming through here. It's much like request.post, right? But it's the data that's coming through. And then we wanna actually use our serializer class. Now, there's a couple ways on how we could go about doing this, um, but really, I didn't even have to set this serializer class because it doesn't need it because it's just a base API view. So I can actually get rid of this and just cut that out and paste it down here and just say serializer equals to user login serializer. 
because that's really what it is. So this user login serializer, we also wanna pass the data through it. So this is just running the data through that serializer and then we wanna check if it's valid. So we'll do if serializer dot is valid. We're gonna raise an exception if it's not. And in here, we'll just say the new data is equal to serializer dot data. And we're gonna return a response for that data. So that's new data. And then we're gonna put a status code for it, which is HTTP 200 okay. So of course we already imported that. And this response right here is the REST API response. It is not a Django response. So it's definitely different. It's not a standard HTTP response or a shortcut for it. It's gonna be a REST API response, which is important. And then if it's not valid, we're just gonna return another response and it's gonna take serializer.errors and then status equals to HTTP 400 bad request. So it's gonna give us an error if the serializer is not valid is the point there. Um, so that is all we have as far as the login is concerned. So now that we've got this, let's go ahead and bring it into our URLs, copy the URL login view, bring it into an import endpoint, and we will call that endpoint login, user login API view and login. And then we'll go into our project and go to login. And now we've got this get method is not allowed, right? So it's not actually showing us the get method. So let's actually bring that serializer class back and let's see if we get anything from this. So, so if I do serializer class equals to login serializer, I refresh, it actually gives me the HTML form and it allows me to work with that. Um, otherwise it's just raw data. So, so that is one of the um, things that we could have just added and that's that makes that nice and easy. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's try and log in someone, abc123, abc123 at Gmail, and then abc123, think that's it, post it. And what we get back is a username and email, status of 200. If I try something different and the wrong person, um, it's giving me back that as well, right? So it's not actually checking anything. So in our serializer, we're not actually validating the data, right? So it is valid. It's the data that we said to pass, but other than that, we're not actually validating that data specifically. Um, so that's something we'll do in the next one. And if you have any questions on what we did with this login view and how we set it up, let us know. But again, the main part here is setting up the method that we want to actually accept. Because even in the login view itself, notice it says method git is not allowed. Of course, we could create our own if we wanted to, but that's not something we need to. So in the next one, let's go ahead and get those validations working so we can see it actually as it should be. All right, so we'll see you in the next one.